but we have got to be good at factoring, okay? And every day, all right, every day we got to practice a little bit more, a little bit more. Now, for today's lesson, uh, it's going to kind of be weird. I usually skip over section 7.3, okay? Um, but I thought, you know what, we, you guys have been doing considerably well as far as the pacing of this class goes in the midst of this pandemic, especially. So I thought I'm going to sprinkle in just a, a couple of examples. I got one in green and one in yellow up here. Y'all take these two down and uh, and we'll call it a day for, for 7.3. And we'll just pick up with 7.4 as I had planned on doing. These are called complex fractions, okay? They use the word complex fractions because they look daggum confusing. You got fractions inside of fractions. All right, that can be pretty complex. But if you keep straight just a few of the basic rules that we talked about in the previous section, you'll be all right. OK, like, for example, that minus sign we've talked before. Look at number 156, that minus sign right there, that big fat blue. I said minus sign, divide by sign. Uh, it acts as a grouping symbol. What's it grouping? It's saying, hey, you got two fractions up top that you got to do first. You got to do these two first. And it's saying then you got to do these two down at the bottom next. So this is like the old Kmart blue light special two for one. OK, it's two problems in one. So what I expect you guys to be able to do real easy example, right? Is tell me what's one half plus three fourths. Five fourths. Good. I didn't take very much brain power at all, right? Because this is a numerical example and we're pretty good, especially when one of the denominators is already set up as the LCD. All right. Uh, what about three fifths and seven tenths? Good. Now, if you're one that's like, wait a minute, what? How, how did we? Uh, Thirteen tenths. I don't get that. Remember what we talked about yesterday. You got to change one of the fractions there. We just changed the first fraction, make it six tenths in that example. Now, we get back to that big fat division bar, right? And division, William Christ, is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Good. Because what this problem boils down to is we've got five fourths divided by 13 tenths. And so we know, of course, as as we talked about before, that you just multiply by the reciprocal, which means flip that fraction. OK, that's all a complex fraction is. It's, it's just a two for one Kmart blue light special. OK, you do the problem up top, you do the problem down at the bottom. Easy enough. And then, by the way, before I multiply, am I going to want to say five times ten is fifty and four times three is fifty two? And then simplify. I can do that, but it's easier to do what first? Yeah, if there's a factor of two, for example, that goes into both of those, it's easier to go ahead and simplify first and get our answer that way. Okay. Now, that being said, you guys try number 159. Okay. Structurally, I mean, it's going to work exactly the same. It will be a little bit more challenging to, to highlight uh, the, the tough part for you. It'll be a little bit more challenging for you to add those two fractions because they will have denominators that are unique. But remember what we said yesterday, that the LCD is the product of the two denominators, assuming they don't have any common factors. By the way, Luke, if you don't mind, scooch a little bit. You're kind of close to Wilson over there. Just want to maintain proper social distancing. So N over M plus one. I'm going to write this a little bit bigger. N over M plus one over N. That's the top part. One over N minus N over M. And as you said about working on that, um, you know, I noticed that there's one over N on the top and on the bottom. Can I just scratch those two fractions out? Some of y'all are shaking your head. William Brown, why are you shaking your head? Very good. Couldn't have said it better myself. That big fraction bar group, those two guys up at the top, the plus sign acts as a roadblock, and it says, wait a minute, don't cancel a term. All right, instead what we're called to do, again, little, little Kmart blue light two for one special, just just treat it like a subtraction or an addition problem from the homework last night. Mm -hmm. 
Yesterday was my children's 100th day of school. You guys remember doing that when y'all were kids? Jenny, the kindergartner, dressed up as an old lady. She was a cat lady. She had a fanny pack full of cat treats. She had a shirt that said, I love cats. She had a little, uh, little stuffed cat she had tucked in her fanny pack. And she had some curlers. And my wife sprayed her hair with some gray uh, spray paint or whatever. Not really spray paint, but you know what I mean. Fun stuff. I don't know if we've been in class 100 days or not. It's probably been over. You think so? Yeah. I don't know. We're, we're around it somewhere. You think so? Hey, I'm going to tell you what. The golden age of days off occurred probably about seven or eight years ago. Okay. Every year teaching, I love teaching. Teaching is a cyclical profession where, you know, you rinse and repeat. And uh, so every year, January and February is the grind. January and February is tough for me. But one year, one golden year, we had eight weeks in a row of four day weeks. I kid you not. All right. One Monday, it was like a snow day. One Monday, it was like a, uh, uh, a president's day. Uh, one Monday, uh, Brother Chris gave us off because uh, the uh, the you know soccer team had won the state championship the previous year. Uh, and you know, one Friday was off because of, of some some other thing. It was eight weeks in a row. We had eight four day weeks, and I was like, man, this this will never happen again. This was the best third quarter of my life. <laughs> it was awesome. But we can hope, right? We can hope. All right. Uh, Justin, did you change those two fractions up at the top to where they have a common denominator? What, what was your common denominator? Very good. MN needs to be my common denominator. So I need an N on the first fraction, and I need an M on the second fraction, right? So we multiply N on the top and bottom of the first fraction, M on the top and bottom of the second fraction. And, and what does that yield? So we got N squared plus M over MN. All right, check yourself. Make sure you did it that way. Again, where you're multiplying by a clever form of one. Yeah, M over M, N over N. Question, Luke. Great question. No, you, we remember we leave the denominators alone. That's like saying one sixth plus one sixth equals two sixths, right? Or one over X plus one over X equals two over X. We leave the denominator alone. And then if we can simplify at the end, we of course simplify at the end, but yeah. So it's MN on the bottom, MN on the bottom. Therefore, we're gonna finish up with MN on the bottom. Now, similarly, all right, Jacob, what should be my uh, LCD on these bottom two fractions? Yeah, MN. So what am I missing from this first fraction? M. So I need to put an M there. All right, actually, I'll put my times up there and there. We'll just say, there we go. Uh, let's see, what am I missing from the second fraction? I'm missing an N. So N, and I'll go ahead and put it there. And what does that mean? I'm going to have M minus N squared over NM. All right. Now dividing, we got a big fat division sign, right? Dividing is the same thing as multiplying there, reciprocal. So what do I do, Will, for um, And, and one of the pesky things that textbooks oftentimes do, I got this problem from our homework section in 7.3, is they'd like to put like, I think somebody in, in class yesterday, either in seventh period or, or this period was complaining like, coach, why are you doing all these P's and Q's? Did we, was it somebody in here that was talking about P's and Q's? Like they, they pick these, these pesky numbers that kind of look the same, right? M and N, uh, you know, whatever. But uh, 
we got commutative property, so I reordered the denominator of that second fraction so that you guys would notice what cancels out. MN cancels out. Uh, can I cancel the N squareds? Why not? Do I? I know I'm, I'm repetitive, but you guys are picking up on that now, right? That we can't cancel common terms, only common factors. Am I able to factor uh, the numerator or the, denom the denominator of that final answer? Is anything else factored? Uh -huh. There's no GCF. There's no difference of two squares. There's nothing. So we just leave it as is. Hmm? Factor out a negative one from the bottom. All right, here's what that would look like. If I just put the negative out front. N squared minus M. Which I would accept that as an answer. That's fine. All right. But because the two terms on the top have the same sign and the two terms on the bottom have different signs, no matter what I do with that negative, either factoring a negative out or multiplying a negative in, it won't line up to where I can cancel anything out. They look real similar, uh, but these are, what's the C word that we have for these two? They're conjugates. You can't cancel conjugates. You can only cancel opposites, right? Opposites is where you can factor out the negative one trick. Those are complex fractions in a nutshell, all right? Now, of course, they would get harder. I gave you guys two pretty straightforward examples. Uh, you know, like you look, look right here. Uh, things start to get tougher, as Nick pointed out, like with the homework last night also, right? When you start having to factor things, like you have to factor the difference two squares. You have to factor a regular trinomial. You know, things get different. But structurally, they stay the same. Structurally, the way I work these problems would stay the same. Like, look at 181 real quick. Um, you know, up top, I'm missing a C plus 7 from the denominator, so I'm going to put it on the top and bottom. On that second fraction, I'm missing a C plus 2. So I'll put a C plus 2 on the top and on the bottom. Right, and then, and then all of a sudden it becomes a problem that's very doable. On, on the denominator side of things, you know, we have to factor this out. Does everybody spot two factors of 14 that add up to nine? Man, I sure hope so. Yeah, seven and two, so C plus seven and C plus two. And, and there's no addition that's being done on that bottom one, right? So, so if I can combine, y'all help me do this, five C plus 35. Ooh, let's be careful over here um 3c plus 6 but we're subtracting right so we're gonna have to subtract with what's 5c minus 3c and what's 35 minus 6 good 29 and all of that's over c plus 2 c plus 7 and then all of that is over that second fraction, C plus 7, C plus 2. It, even, even if factoring rears its ugly head, it's still just a fraction on top of a fraction at the end, and you flip the second one and multiply, in which case, I, maybe like, a, do the two parentheses both cancel out in that case? So 2C plus 29 over C plus 2, which I know will cancel, C plus 7, I know that'll cancel, and then we're going to times it by C plus seven, C plus two. Have you gotten good at showing your work on these kinds of problems? Or have you noticed at least that, man, if I don't have a good organized way of showing my work, things get ugly pretty daggum quickly or things get lost in the shuffle. And and once I, I try and go back and figure out what's going down, you know, I can't do that. So, so like I just worked that one kind of in real time, even where the factoring starts coming in, it gets a little bit con uh, confusing at first, but when you practice, you'll be uh, you'll be all right. Will? So like going back right here, if I read you correctly, I think you, you're asking, hey, why don't we cancel this with this? Yeah. All right, that's a fabulous question. We, if you did that, you would get back what you started. We temporarily unsimplified that fraction that I just boxed in orange there 
we temporarily unsimplified it by putting in that artificial factor C plus two over C plus two for the very reason that we wanted those denominators to be the same. You know what I mean? So like when we, and, and even back to one of those easier problems at the very beginning, um, like this one right here, I didn't, uh, I didn't go to the trouble of, of showing it, but you know, that one half, we would have written that up as two fourths. And you say, well, wait a minute, coach, why don't you simplify two fourths? Well, I want it to go with the three fourths, you know what I mean? And then similarly down there with the five uh, on the bottom. So when we're doing problems like this, we yeah, we're we're temporarily introducing a, an extra factor on the top and the bottom that would normally simplify out, but we're doing so the, such that the fractions can get put together. All right, I love it when you guys ask these good questions, so uh, keep them coming. Now, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Okay, you ready? 7.4, here we come. Now, 7.4, oh, this, I was doing this before school and I got distracted. I want to make a copy for y'all's class. Hold on. 7.4, we're going to shift gears to equations. Okay, equations. Let's paste this. And in the very first day of class with you guys, I talked with y'all about equations. What period is this? First period. I know this says quiz, but let's just let's just uh, treat this as like a little warm up right here. Okay, uh, to where you and I can work this together. I gave it to my last year's class as a quiz. Um, but hey, when you're working an equation like this, you're looking for all of the what? All of the numbers that when plugged in for X make a true statement, okay? So like, just, just focus on uh, this first little example. Jot this one down in your notes with me. Or again, not a quiz question, but uh, maybe like a little practice quiz question. What do you think I could do on a problem like number one right here? What could I do, William? Yeah, OK, I can subtract one half from both sides. That's a, that's a great idea. So minus one half. Santiago, can can you do that for me? Can you say one one third minus one half? Which would give you. Good. So on the left hand side now, on the left hand side, we got X over six. Kreitz said move the one half over. So X over six is by itself now. And then um, Calderoni just combined the right hand side, those two fractions, and he got negative one over six. And that should be really easy to solve. Cash, can you look and see what the answer is? Just using inspection. You got X over six equals negative one over six. So X equals what? Yeah. And that's that's positionally. Uh, if if I didn't know how to do that really easily. I could cross multiply because those are that's a proportion there. Um, OK, fabulous question that gets to my next point and, and bless you. When we're in class today, when we're solving equations, there's going to be two basic approaches that we could take. The first approach is to combine like terms, combine fractions using our skills from the previous section you know, adding and subtracting fractions. And then there's going to be a more efficient, a better approach, a big boy approach, if I might say, that involves doing what William just suggested. And I'll show you that in just a minute. OK, um, let, let's actually, though, before we move on, what about this second question here? This is what kind of equation am I looking at on number two there? What do we call that? Standard form. Oh, yeah, it's quadratic. Good. Now, a quadratic equation, we've learned from our fundamental theorem of algebra. Colton, how many solutions does a quadratic equation have? Two, Two solutions. Very good. And, and we find that by setting it equal to zero to start, then we factor, then we use the, the zero product property, the ZPP. All right, is this coming back to you from the previous chapter, right? Because we're going to be doing a little bit of this today. We subtract, what color am I using? I'll do green. Uh, we subtract 36, so we got n squared minus 5n minus 36. All right, we ask uh, Joseph Russell, can you think of two factors of 36 that add up to 5? Uh, of one's going to be positive, one's going to be negative. Good, so n minus 9. And I love the rapidity with which he answered that question. If we're good at factoring, we can factor quickly. And we don't have to sit there all day long twiddling our thumbs and kind of thinking about it. 
Uh, Ryan Jeffers, what does that mean my two answers are going to be? Because I know it's quadratic. One answer is going to be... Uh, uh, positive, positive 9 and negative 4. Fabulous. Positive 9 or negative 4. And, and that's, that's solving a basic quadratic equation using factoring into ZPP. Again, a skill that you learned in the last chapter is going to be uber necessary in this chapter. All right. So congratulations. If this had been a quiz, you would have gotten a 2 out of 2. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. Did you say poggers? Y'all know I do senior retreats. I had a senior retreat uh, a couple weeks ago where this kid was saying poggers a bunch. I'm sure that's even late. <laughs> I've never met him before, so I don't know. Uh, all right, so um, when we when we look at a problem like uh, that that first quiz question, right? I, th I think I told Christ there's there's really two options as far as how to solve them. We just did the first option in that warm up quiz. We just did the first option, which was to combine things and to make a proportion. Now, I got to make sure you guys understand what a proportion is. OK, so I'm going to talk about muffins because I like muffins. Hogan, do you like muffins? Oh, baby, my muffins are real good. OK, <laughs> especially when I say it like that. I, I brought my muffins to school last year um, a, a bunch because I, I chair the math department. So when we have math department meetings, I bake muffins and I'll do blueberry muffins and I'll do chocolate chip muffins. Those are my specialties. And, you know, strangely enough, I freaking love both of those types of muffins. One time I tried to do a blueberry chocolate chip muffin. It was terrible. It was gross. Drake knows what I'm talking about. You, you can't that those two things are mutually exclusive. You can't meld the two together. But anyway, let's say we're baking some some muffins. All right. What do you all want? Chocolate chip? Blueberry. Blueberry. Get out of here with that banana crap. Are you serious? Dead. All right, we'll do blueberry. Santiago, you talked me into it with your enthusiasm. So we're doing blueberry muffins, all right? Now look, normally speaking, y'all listen to me. Normally speaking, um, let's see here. To make 12 blueberry muffins, I need three quarters cups of milk. Okay, but there's more than 12 of you guys in here. Okay, let's say I want to make two dozen. Okay, yeah, what you just solved in your head was a proportion. Okay, so like, I, again, a proportion, I got to make sure you guys understand this, is where you have two fractions that equal each other. Okay, so what did I say? Three fourths cups of milk will make 12 muffins. And the question was, okay, well, how many cups of milk do I need to make? Uh, 4, 8, 10, 13, 16, 18, and Ryan will count you as 19. You know, 19. Now, that's a harder proportion. We can't solve that one in our head usually. All right? But but a proportion is solvable by doing what? <laughs> Cross multiply. You're like, again, with the sound effects. Okay? Have we talked about playing Fruit Ninja in here before? No, that's a good game. I love Fruit Ninja. Man, you know what my favorite fruit on that was? Bananas. Watermelon. No. Pie the pomegranate. Who said pomegranate? That boy cash. Because the pomegranate is the one where you went crazy, like, and you swiped it just a million times. That's not the coconut. It's not the coconut. It's the pomegranate. No, it's the. You're thinking. You're thinking of the movie Hook with Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams and Julia Roberts. Uh, I'm with Clint. The banana's the best. It was a banana. That was like. No, it was a coconut. I'm not gonna argue because I know I'm right. By the way, do you all know what uh, what month is pomegranate month? Winter pomegranates in season. It's November, but you're close. November. November is pomegranate season. Pomegranates are very pomegranates are very uh, challenging to to consume. Because of the, they're very People say they hate the seeds. I love to eat like. I like seeds. I like Dude, that's what you eat. You eat the seeds. Yeah. I'm talking about the little <laughs> tiny seeds. They get like it's oh, the crunchy fiber part. Yeah, I like that. Other people hate it. Yeah, like the little kernels. They look like uh, red corn. That's pomegranate. All right, we have we have diverged mightily from the topic at hand. So let's get back to it. My my little story about the muffins is to make sure that we remember how to solve a proportion. I talk about Fruit Ninja because I, whoosh, whoosh, okay, you cross multiply to solve. I hate using that phrase because people get it confused with like what we've been doing the last couple of weeks where we cross cancel. Okay, cross multiplying is like where you literally say, okay, I'm going to multiply the extremes and the means. Three fourths and 19 are referred to as the extremes. That's a good vocab word. And uh, 12 and X are referred to as the means. Okay, you multiply both of those and then you solve it out. I don't care about solving this out. 
because uh, I'm not going to make you muffins right now during a pandemic. But um, see, y'all had your hopes up, didn't you? The, the notion of solving a proportion, though, is where you got one fraction equaling another fraction, and what do we do? Cross multiply. We cross multiply. Now, that is one technique that we could do. Um, like in this first example right here, in, in red, we could subtract one third from both sides. One third is the same thing as two sixths, right? So I could subtract two sixths from both sides, and I get one over x uh, equals three sixths or one half. And we cross multiply, we get three x equals six or x equals two. Okay. Yeah, that's a real easy way to do it for a. Yes, yes. Um, so, so that's one technique. If you have, if you encounter an equation with fractions in it, okay, you can certainly combine everything on the left, combine everything on the right, get it down to one fraction equals one fraction. That's a proportion. Cross multiply and solve. That's a legit. That's fine and dandy. Drake. Oh, uh, we subtracted one third from both sides. We said um, let's take one third from the left and from the right. Uh, and then one third is the same thing as two sixths. So they had a common denom and then five minus two gives me three. Good question. And, and again, anytime if I gloss over something, fellas, do like what Drake just did. Ask, ask, ask. Now, <clears throat> I, I told you there's sort of a way that the big boys handle equations with fractions. And that is method number two. It's called kill all the fractions. <laughs> OK, you guys, do y'all play uh, FPS games? All right. What's the most popular one these days? Fortnite. Call of Duty. Call of Duty is pretty popular. So when we, yes, sir. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what the heck is he doing over here, fellas? He lost his mind. I'm trying to get these youngsters excited about math. He That's... lost his mind. Come to the real world over here in accounting. <laughs> We talk business sense. Do you let freshmen take accounting? Absolutely not. When you grow up, <laughs> you see, mature. That's my job. I mature them, and then I throw them down the way to you. Come on over here in two years. I'll see y'all in two years. <laughs> y'all know who that is? That's Coach Kelso. He's always in a good mood. Is he ever not in a good mood? Come on. He's in a great mood. Did you say yes <laughs> he wasn't yelling. He was getting getting them fired up. All right, but but seriously, I, I had some friends in college that they they loved playing. Halo was the game when we were in college. Okay, y'all know about Halo. Um, and so we would play multiplayer Halo, and and um, there would be one guy. He would be the sniper. Okay, and he would just sit up and he, in the crow's nest. And he'd pick them off one at a time. Okay, and then there was this other kid that he loved using frag grenades. And he would find everybody that was like all in a bunker together. And he'd just drop in a frag grenade and kill them all all at once. Okay. And, and those are, those are kind of two mentalities that you could take regarding fractions in an equation. What I mean by that is like, look at your, I'm going to zoom in. Look at your equation right here. We got one over three, or, or excuse me, I forgot what it was. One over X, one over three, five over six. One over X, one over three, and five over six. OK, so like, for example, I could multiply everything by X to kill this first fraction. That snipes that first fraction, right? Because to get rid of a fraction, you multiply by the denominator. So I can multiply everything by X. Let's see what happens when I do that. The left side gets multiplied by X. The right side gets multiplied by X. OK, I have to distribute because there's two terms. What is X over X? One. Boom. No more fraction. That fraction's dead. I killed it. Uh, however, the second one is becomes x over 3, and this one becomes 5x over 6. So there's still two more fractions, okay? And then I got to say, okay, well, let's multiply both sides by 3. And say, so, all right, well, we'll do that. 3 and 3, okay? See, I'm out of room. This is taking so long. The problem with sniping is that you only get to kill one fraction at a time. All right, so 3 times 1 is 3. Uh, what happens to 3x over 3? Just just x. And then uh, we got to multiply by 3 over here. So that's what? 15x over 6 or 10x over... No, not 10x over 2. 
Uh, three goes into six twice. Five X over two. Sorry, brain fart. Five X over two. Okay, now we're down to just one fraction left. So what would I multiply both sides by to get rid of that third fraction? Snipe the last fraction. Yeah, multiply everything by two. Whatever I do on the left, I got to do on the right. So I got, what, what, what do I got? Six plus two X equals five X. And then, ah, finally I'm back to a comfortable equation. An equation where there are no more fractions. All right, no more fractions. However, look at, golly, Pete, look at all that we just had to do right there. That's a lot of steps. We need to channel our inner frag grenade. We need to kill all the fractions all at once. And the way that we're gonna do it, our frag grenade, if you will, is gonna be our LCD, our least common denominator. So check this out with me. We got one over X, we got one over three, oops, and we got five over six. So one of you smart guys tell me, what is something that I can multiply both sides by to kill all the fractions all at once. Not X over six. Six X. Six X. The LCD here, the least common denominator is six X. Now, look, you can use inspection and probably see that, but remember, we've got our technique to fall back upon if we get stuck. Factor each denominator. There's X, there's three, there's two times three. We circle each new factor raised to the highest power x is a new factor nowhere else is it listed to a higher power three is a new factor nowhere else is it listed to a higher power and two is my last new factor and nowhere else is it raised to a higher power so we multiply x times three times two we get six x that's the lcd okay now i don't need to do that for this easy example i can just use inspection and say hey my lcd is going to be six x and watch what happens think frag grenade we're going to we're going to drop this into the bunker and it's going to get rid of all the fractions all at once. What's 6x times 1 over x? Try again. 6x times 1 is 6x. 6x over x just becomes 6. All right, what's 6x times a third? 2x. And what's 6x times 5 sixths? 5x. No more fractions. No more bullets. Y'all ever seen that Looney Tunes? Cartoon. Bugs and Bugs and Daffy are uh, are having a battle of wits with Elmer Fudd, and it's like rabbit season, duck season, rabbit season, duck season. That's one of my favorites. Okay. Anyway, Elmer runs out of bullets, and he's like, "No more bullets." Well, we got no more fractions. Okay, because we killed them all. We got rid of all of them, and that's a very easy equation now to solve. Okay, it's so easy. JT No Breeze, tell me what to do. <laughs> Subtract, by two x. Subtract both sides by 2x. And then you talk about two x. x equals 2. All right. Now, look, I'm well aware of the fact that y'all look up there at the red and you say, man, that's mighty nice looking, coach. And I'm not saying that the red approach is a bad approach. But for the more complicated problems, the tougher problems, you are going to want to take this approach all day long. And you're not going to want to do it sniping off each little individual fraction. Oh, no, no. We're going to kill off all the fractions all at once with the LCD frag grenade. Okay? That's what we're going to do. So, here is your example to finish out our class today. Okay? I want you to multiply both sides by the LCD. You got to first figure out what that LCD is, and then I want you to multiply both sides. That means every term on the left and every term on the right gets multiplied by the LCD. Okay? And when you do that, bang, 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 go all three of the fractions. No more fractions. A little embarrassed that Coach Kelso heard me laughing maniacally over here. He's going to give me grief later at practice today. Yes, sir. Where did the 6x go? 6x was our LCD. It is the, the expression that contains each denominator as a factor. In other words, it is the common monomial that, that contains each of our denominators in it. Like for this one, what would this one be, Cash? What's a number that has both 5 and 3 as a factor? 15, good. And then it also needs to have Y, so we say 15Y. 
So that's kind of the same deal with that last one. We said 6x because it had both 2 and 3 and x all as a factor. Jackson Pollard, what do you want to multiply both sides by? 15y. So we're going to do 15y on the left, 15y on the right. Wilson Webster, can you distribute it for me on the left side of the, both those fractions? What's well, 15y times 1 over y? 15. No more fraction. What's well, 15y times 2 over, six, or over 3? Pardon me. No more fraction. And then uh, Luke, what's 15y over 5? 3y. No more fraction. And I, I like this equation a whole heck of a lot better because now I can subtract 3y from both sides. I can subtract 15 from both sides. And I can divide both sides by 7. That's cake at this point, or maybe even muffins, we might say, uh, because now we've got our answer. Okay. And I'm out of time for today. I got 25 seconds left with you guys. Y'all wrap your notes up on that example. I will be gone tomorrow. However, I will have a screencast walking you through six or seven more examples on this topic, and it'll be on YouTube, so y'all check that out. Cal Run. You sure? Okay. Well, you guys have a wonderful day. Live Jesus in our hearts. Thank you so much. Does anybody know what they are serving for lunch today?